David Muir has been tracking the tale of two elementary schools, seven children lost at one, everyone getting out safe at the other. Good morning, David. George Robin, good morning to you. And as you know, this morning for the first time, we're beginning to see the faces of the young victims of this tornado. We've also learned something else about the strength of the tornado as it hit those two elementary schools. Take a look at this dramatic before and after. This is Briarwood Elementary, the before. Now look at the after this morning. We've learned it was an EF5 as it hit that school more than 200 miles per hour. Plaza Towers, the second school, the before and the after. And of course, that's where we lost seven children. This morning, we hear from a father who raced to that school not knowing if his daughter was alive. Nine-year-old Janae Hornsby, one of the children lost. Her father telling us he was on his way to the school to pick up his daughter as the storm was bearing down. He got stuck in traffic and couldn't get there in time. When I uh, got to the school, it was, uh, it was completely gone. It was just rubble. There's no way to explain the, the anger and the sadness that I had all at one time. Overnight authorities finishing their search of Plaza Towers, also promising to search every home here, every building three times to make sure no one is forgotten. The roof came off and then I looked up and there was a tornado. I saw it swirling and then I saw uh, wood and stuff swirling around. Hello. Hey. But no one, no children have been discovered since Monday, since only some of the students emerged reuniting with their families. This morning, a puzzle remains. How did two schools take a direct hit, both buildings oh devastated, gosh. and yet only one with a miracle ending? At Briarwood Elementary, everyone survived. When I was like, I tried to get up and I tried to move the bricks off of my leg and it hurt so much and I was like, and it was during, and the tornado had not left yet. I was just screaming, help, my leg, my leg, and no one could hear me. Does that, does that still ring in your ear, yeah. the children and what they were saying during all this? Just the crying that they want their moms. And I can't even imagine not being able to give those kids back to their parents that brought them to me that morning. Some of the teachers telling us they believe the construction of the schools played a role. At Briarwood, each grade is organized into pods, a few classrooms in each building, and in the middle of each pod, an opening to the outdoors. And when those walls collapsed, they crawled out through that opening, climbing over the rubble. Plaza Towers Elementary, a more traditional building, a long line of classrooms. When the roof, the walls collapsed, unlike the other school, there were no open spaces to crawl through. The tornado went in and I was so afraid that um, I was hanging on to one of the desks and then um, I fell back and then um, all the dirt started getting in my eyes and all my clothes. The brave children who got out and those two teachers I spoke with here told me that there were no safe rooms in either of those schools, Robin, and when authorities were pressed on that later, they did acknowledge that in fact FEMA has helped build safe rooms in schools across Oklahoma, but that there's not funding for every school and that these two schools did not have that funding. There's going to be a huge conversation in the weeks and months to come about how quickly they can get safe rooms in many more schools here in this tornado zone.